didn't even know anything much about Casamar. So we flew into Barra, Colorado and um, took a boat from Barra to the camp, to the lodge. And uh, on the way there, I could see tarpon rolling all over the place. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. There was just so much fish. Uh, we got a Casamar itself, we got off, we saw the lodge, it was a beautiful place. All um, nicely uh, gardened and everything. And Bill was very proud of the fact that we were fly fishermen. Uh, Lefty Cray come down, and Mark Sawson, and, uh, and Dan Blanton, and uh, Ed Given, and a few others, uh, Carrie Kine. They all came down in, in groups, uh, all together. The fishing was just extraordinary. And they were so impressed with that, that you know they kept coming in. Some guys came back three times in a year, just to fish. I wish I could say that we were the first people to find this place, but we weren't. It's a place full of history and folklore, and perhaps it's safe to say we're trying to resurrect it. All your big names in fly fishing used to come down here in the late 70s and 80s. Names like Lefty Cray, Blanton, Brown, Garinsky, App. All these dudes were down here cutting their teeth on the most pristine tarpon fishery in the world. But over the years, those people stopped coming and lodges like Rio Colorado and Casa Mar all became mismanaged and the jungle took over. Literally decades had passed and then we showed up. Schools of happy tarpon still exist here in large numbers, so we decided to create a plan to bring it back. But then... The number of cases of COVID-19 outside China has increased 13-fold.
you can pick one one memory from Casamar that stands out, story or something that happened. My goodness, there's so many. Every morning we woke up to a new drama. Left he was on the bow fishing, and he hooked his tarpon, and I was driving the boat, and suddenly I sort of went around a little bit, and the tarpon jumped out of the water and crashed into a mud pond, like a flat. Boom. The whole outline of the top and bright silver gets this black mud. And left the thought it was sort of a nice easy beach sort of thing. So he leapt over to sort of get the top into the mud. And there was he covered in mud. <laughs> the lefty cray hugging a top in a big sty of mud. And that stuck in my memory forever. I don't care what to say with lefty, but that was lefty for me. And the big sty, forever life was a joke, you know. Big smile in his face. Now we had a ball of a laugh, and uh, that was uh, fishing with Lefty Cray. But the market decided to go south. They went to the Amazon, and that was a world fresh. They didn't bother with the tarpon anymore. Tarpon's old hat. Casamar crashed. Bill died. Bill passed away, and there was no one else to pick up the star, the, 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 the banner. Uh, he never really had anyone else that could run the place. Because running a camp in the tropical world is very difficult. It's not an easy job. Um, once you take the soul out of it, that was it. And Bill was the soul and heart of that whole operation. And it was a great time. I went back the other day and just brought tears to my eyes. You see how bad the place is. It's crashing down. But it represents time. You know, all things come, all things go. And. Uh, as it uses, as it was a saying, the river runs through it. You know, the pebbles and the noise in the the river. And that's true. That's very, very true. The fish is our friend, not their enemy. And and share that water with him. You know, after sitting in Peter's home and listening to him tell these amazing accounts from Casamar, I knew I had to experience these areas for myself. Now, as my friends and I began to trace the steps these legendary anglers had taken in the past, we too were astonished by what we found out there in the jungle. Without a doubt, Bill Barnes had stumbled across something amazing all those years ago, and thankfully, we were able to get a glimpse just how amazing the area surrounding Casamar Lodge truly was. Yeah. yeah buddy.